What's up, everybody? I'm Evie Starr here with Brian Steele Medina from Gemini Syndrome. How are you doing, Brian? Very well. Did you bring the rain with you again? Mm. Did you bring the rain we with did. you again? We did. We did. We were, man, last time we played here, uh, yeah. flooded. The whole venue was, uh, flooded. There were just cats and cows floating down the street. And, we were floating. We and know. it was a beautiful blue sky this morning, and now, now it's overcast and raining and thundering, and hopefully we don't float away. Hopefully not. We have canoes on standby, just so you know, tonight, actually. Because, <laughs> you know, last time we weren't so prepared. But anyway, how's the tour? I know you guys did the tour festival, but you guys are out on your own tour with Seven Dust now, correct? Yeah, yeah. How's I mean, that? It's great. I mean, Seven Dust is, uh, is one of my favorite bands and really good guys. You know, we've had the pleasure of becoming friends with these dudes over the past couple of years. So it's good to be out with friends. Always good to yeah. be out with friends. I mean, the whole music world is kind of one big group of friends and family. Yeah, and you get and you get to meet everyone little by little. It's a Absolutely. Big extended family. It's crazy. I'll run to someone. They're like, you know this person too, and they're all the way from across the world. So I can't. Well, I have a whole list of questions for you, Evan. So let's try those out. All right. All right. So, Steel. How'd you come up with that? Is that a nickname or is that your real last name? No. Um, Steel is my father's father's last name, oh. and Medina is my mother's father's last name. So I wanted to keep both names for my family, so I just took Brian Stone Medina. That's very cool. That's yeah. very awesome. I respect both the maternal and the father. Exactly. I dig it. You guys are all about the yin and yang. Yes. Thin, I had, to, then, had to keep it in balance. Of course. Because, yeah. you know, I didn't realize that the S-Y-N means to bring together or simultaneously. So syndrome, you could say, means the act of bringing people. That's exactly what it is, and that's why we have the whole thing with sinners and syndicate oh, and s syndrome. It's all it's all about bringing it together. I dig it because you guys have a really, really amazingly wide array of influence. I was actually shocked. Yeah. Uh, you guys are classical, metal, I mean, all over the place. Yeah, everything. I mean, you get five guys that are all very diverse. You know, you're going to have a lot of different stuff. Oh, it probably gets interesting out yeah. down the road, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so you've been playing drums since you're four. Well, pots yeah. and pans kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't start lessons until I was seven. But, yeah, when I was four, I, you know, I don't remember it, but I have pictures of me pulling out pots and pans and the wood spoons, and my mom thought it was really funny. And, you know, by the time I was six, I was kind of bugging her for lessons, so she put me in piano. And then by the time I was seven, I did my, uh, I had to, you know, do a penance of a year of piano before I could get drum lessons and Aww. proved I really wanted it. So then I, then well, I got them. Okay. You have good parents to make you actually oh, yeah. prove you want something. Yeah. So that probably has a lot to do with She made me work for it at a young age, yeah. That's, that's very cool. That's probably why you are so deep and intelligent. I mean, I've had the privilege of actually speaking with you through media opportunities and such across the way. And, you know, friends and clients is sort of just, you know, hey, how's it going? Oh wow, man! I mean, I come from a really cool family. You know, a small. It was just me and my mom growing up, uh, and my brother. Um, but you know, sh we were always encouraged to read and learn and 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 be free thinkers. You know, I, I mean, I remember at a really young age, just kind of staying up in my bedroom at night, like trying to like wrap my. 10 year old head around like the concept of like infinity you know what I mean me and my mom would just sit there and just like talk about it for hours and hours and hours and that just turned into you know like in um when I was in the seventh grade you know I um my mom was dating a guy that was the philosophy teacher at the University of Denver so I would sit in his classes and I would just like learn all about like Nietzsche and all these crazy like uh, philosophers you know so by the time I was in high school I had this really eclectic like book collection you know I was into like Dante's Inferno and you know and like I said like I was a Nietzsche freak growing up you know and probably your favorite philosopher you'd say yeah well just because he's just the one I got most into you know right. I'm, I mean, I'm sure if I got into other guys I would you know I want I mean I want to get into like like young you know, is a big one I want to get into because he brings, you know, like Carl Jung. Carl Jung. With a, with a, he brings together like spirituality with psychology at the same time. And that, that's where I kind of live. That's really fascinating. I, I have a degree in psychology and I was lucky enough to study on. So 
Oh wow. It's um, it's funny because all the you're all about bringing people together, and in truth, the right answer relies in everybody being this, you know coming together. Like yeah. to get anything done. People are people so afraid together. of that. People are always like, there's this whole like stigma with like Illuminati and New World Order, and everyone's like, we got to keep it all separate, but. The reality of it is, is like we're all one and we're all human beings. And the yeah. more we, you know, divide ourselves with nationalism and racism and sexism and just the illusion that we're separate is just is what's going to kill us. And I think that I think the more that we break down those barriers, you know, society will get better as a whole. Oh, I think I, I couldn't agree with you more. It actually gives me chills because it's so damn true. People are afraid of what they don't understand. Mm-hmm. And I wish more people would take time to listen to people like you speak and understand that we were the ones in school that made straight A's and took lessons and, you know, we were the geeks. I was anyway. And, and it served me well because I got to learn talents like you did, you know, and four of them, that's so early. I mean, it's amazing that you stuck with it so long. Yeah. Like, obviously, I told you before, like, you, your focus has been described as razor sharp. How in the hell did you develop such great focus? Please tell me, because I must know. Oh, man. I mean, it depends on, like, what you, I mean, I, like, I think I'm a you, classic how case How do you of, hone it into, like, your passion? Like, how do you turn all of your emotions or your focus or whatever into playing drums and doing what you do? I don't know. It's like it's like running, you know? I, I, I went through a phase when I was running a lot. And you just start, and you're, like, super tired by, like, a quarter mile and a mile. But if you have in your head you're gonna you're gonna run for ten miles, you just kind of go numb to it after a while, and you just kind of put yourself in a rhythm, you know. And that's kind of what I did with music. I mean, when I, I mean, it wasn't even like really, I can't even say it was a conscious decision. It was just what I always did, you know. Like in high school, at that age, you know, it's hard to really say, you know, I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna do that, you know. I just kind of gravitated towards what I did good and what I, what was fun and where my friends were and I was in you know marching band and drum corps and music theory and I, I had a cool high school that had a lot of music classes so I was I was able to like I think in my sophomore year of high school I was somehow in percussion ensemble marching band symphonic band um, music theory and jazz band all, all in the same wow. year you know what I mean and yeah, and I, it got me in trouble. I almost didn't graduate because I, I was had too many music credits and not enough of the core credits. But, but, but the point is that like, like I just that's what I gravitate towards. That's what I did right. good. And so when I left high school or when I graduated high school, I graduated like a semester early, and that put me in a position to where, for the first time, I was like, well, what am I gonna do with all this free time? And I had a couple friends. Um, that went to different high schools and we got together and we played like Deftones covers and it was the first time I played with a guitar player and a bass player and I was always just a, uh, I, was, I was a drum corps kid so I was just always, you know, just practicing on a practice pad or some tenors or something. I mean I had a drum set but I, I it was always like, drum set was more just like that thing I had in my basement that I would play on for fun right. and then I never was in a band so it was the minute I focused my attention on to being in a band I, um, I, I, I had there was one summer where I had to make a decision because when you when you when you're up for drum corps it's like you 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 finish your auditions by October for the next summer so I had to decide you know I was in when I graduated high school I had made the tenor line which was like a lifelong goal of mine because I was because that's you know uh, it was really hard I come from a really good drum corps like I was in Blue Nights and it was real competitive you know I'm I'm fighting for four spots out of like. 50 guys, you know, and I had made it for the first time, I and know. no, but I, but then That's I had to, awesome. but then I quit because I had to decide was I going to do that or was I going to be in a band, and but I so I went with the band. The joy of accomplishing that. Yeah, which yeah. Is, it goes back to the whole belief system and the law of attraction that I've heard you speak about before. Yeah. Tell everybody what that means to you because I, I know what it means to me. I, I'm a firm believer, but um, well, the whole I mean, law of attraction is just kind of like. I mean, it's obviously a book and a movie and all those things. So I, th- I, I, I but think. But how would you describe the actual? In a law? real general way, I would say that, I mean, it can be summed up as saying whatever you focus your attention to is what's going to manifest itself in your life. Did if you, you ever see yourself doing this, it's all I ever saw myself doing. So I mean, it's just kind of one of those things where you just kind of push forward and work at something and don't give up, and it's going to happen for you. Pays off, doesn't yeah. It? 
So you, I know you guys are from all over. You're based out of LA. Did you grow up in LA, or are you from somewhere different? Um, I moved to LA from Denver in 2000. How did you manage to avoid all the temptations once you got to LA and keep yourself out of trouble? And... I didn't. Oh. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> so you at had your all. little naughty face. Oh yeah. Um, that's. I mean, that's a huge part of my life. You know. I mean, I had a lot of success really young, and. Um, and then I went through a phase where I let a lot of things get in the way, you know, drugs and alcohol and the, that whole story. And, you know, when I, I got sober six years ago, uh, and ever since then, my life just literally exploded in all the best way possible. And that's something that I'm, like, you know, really proud of. I'm not shy about it. You don't make uh, me cry. <laughs> no, because it's so awesome to hear someone say that because I feel the same way. Like, I was very successful young. Went through a phase, and I'm on my way back up, and it feels awesome. Yeah, people are always like, "Oh, it must be so hard to be sober and on the road no, and everything." No. And for me, it was the opposite. Like, the minute I got involved into that stuff, I lost, I lost everything. And then, the minute I cleaned up my act, I got it all back and more. You know, and and I got my family back and and a good circle of friends and a good support system around me. You That's know, so. Amazing. You two, you play on DW drums and you play yes. Evans drum heads, correct? Yep. And you've been and playing. And Pro Sticks and Sabian Symbols. Oh, Sabian Symbols. All take on really Pro good Mark care Sticks. of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what the hell is a hybrid snare, here? snare head? It's a marching. It's a marching snare head. Nice. So from yeah, from my drum corps days, I, I still love the sound of a thick Kevlar head, and they're bullet. They're made of the same material that Bulletproof S is made out of. So you can. Um, I mean, I've never broken one. I'll, I'll dent it, I'll put a big dip in it, and uh, then I'll change it. But I've never, so you can't break them. And snare heads are, you know, Not notorious cheap. for breaking. So <laughs> get a hybrid, you know, or, you know, just a Kevlar head, it'll last you a while. Yeah, I know you, um, you also said you burned the candle at both ends. What's your astrological sign? Are you on a cusp of two signs or something? No, I'm, a, I'm dead center Leo. Oh, so you're the fire dead, sign. Dead center Leo, Virgo moon, Sagittarius rising. I know no wonder you're so passionate. <laughs> oh, yeah, I meant to too. fire. That's why I was curious. Cause I'm like, I could tell you're something, like, powerful and intense. But yeah. yeah. Um, what makes the drums your favorite, like, in the sticks, obviously, and the cymbals? I mean, what oh, makes like, you continue to play on them since, like, you were a teenager in 1997? I mean, I've had the same drums since I was a, since I was a teenager, so I have never uh, found any reason to want to change them I mean they're like I recorded the album on them and in my they're some of the nicest drums how that, many pieces is your drum set with cymbals because you play a pretty intricate kit I don't well I have four toms kick snare three crashes china those. ride I was gonna that was another thing I didn't put on here but I dig the toms because they have such a cool undertone and they add such a flavor to music that does bring you back to those marching days yeah I'm a big I'm a big band. tom guy I, I do a lot I mean I I think I do a lot more tom groups. What are the and big ones called that you play on? Really? The big stand-up drums? You can tune them? Oh, like a timpani? Yes. Timpani, kettle drum. Yeah, those things are neat. Well, Star Wars. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> are you a Star Wars buff? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know I probably make a lot of my friends angry by saying that. I have, I have some friends that are hardcore, man. Hardcore know, Star Wars guys. <laughs> I, 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 I like it. I'm, <laughs> it's not for everybody. Yeah. Okay, so you do your meditation on stage. Yes, I do. What did you do? Do you have a routine for off stage before you go on? Immediately before I go on? Not really. No, I'm just usually kind of just getting ready to go go up there. That's my like little moment. Yeah, it feels like the whole night is always just a crescendo of chaos and running around and getting everything set up and worked out. And then, like, I always just try to take. 60 seconds before I play just to kind of center myself and put myself in that in a zone where I just zero out my mind and like let everything just kind of like get empty for a second before I so open my eyes and see what's going on out there. It is a meditation story which oh. is very helpful and cool because if you can a lot of people don't realize that when you can make your mind be quiet you can accomplish so much just by making it shut for a little while. Yeah. It's, it's I wish I had more like usually <laughs> that's 99.9% .9 of the of my life, that's my only meditation of the day. And I wish I could develop the discipline to, like, set aside 20 minutes in the morning or hey, 20 minutes in the evening. it'll come to pass. <laughs> right? Maybe. Maybe. i got to maybe work at it, too. <laughs> you guys, like, you guys get into even cycle of emotions. Like, you take your fans through 
an entire cycle of human emotions when they're listening to your set. That comes from your own personal experiences, am I correct? I mean, that's very premeditated. I mean, just the way we designed the album, the way we designed the set list, the way we designed the songs. I mean, they, they're... The the album's meant to be listened to front to back, you know. I know I have it. I do listen to it front to yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. If you let you know, I mean, even with the symbology behind it, if you if you take the meaning, uh, if you look at all the songs on on uh, on on the maze, which you know you have like pleasure and pain at the top, you have left to me on the bottom, you have you know resurrection here, Babylon here, and, and you kind of travel around it like a clock. Each song that lives opposite on the maze is a polar opposite in meaning. So what's in the meaning of pleasure and pain, which is uniting everyone and everyone being all awesome and together in one, is the opposite of left in me, which is literally about two people getting divorced and, and getting, be, you know, having to deal with your, your family falling apart right in front of you. And you know, resurrection is all about you know, someone overcoming their obstacles and, and, and rising from the ashes. And Babylon is about like, society falling and crumbling apart. So if you take that journey around the maze, the, the songs kind of go from super positive to super negative and then back to super positive again. That's very cool. Artistically and lyrically in, in every way. They hear very intense lyrics and, and music. I, I mean, obviously I'm a fan, but I'm glad you said live because you describe your songs as being alive. And that is such a powerful thing because art is living. I mean, it, it might not be something that I can take home with me, but it's art nonetheless. And I mean, it really is though because, um, you know, what we consider to be tangible. Uh, physical, there are so many more layers to that, you know, with our consciousness and our memories and, and everything, you know, if you, if you, I mean, I, the, the things that I listened to growing up, you know, I, I listen to those songs again today and, and they bring me back to that place and so there is something tangible to that, there's a, there's a, there's a physicality to that that we can't necessarily touch with our fingertips but it, it but remains with us. It hits your senses. It definitely yeah. touches more than just your sound. Yeah, we're getting like super geeky and esoteric <laughs> here but it's, it, yeah, I, I, I believe mean, it. I love you know? it because it's, it's, it's so true because song, I mean to me like that would be my babies like you know that's your children. You want to see them grow and rise to popularity and do their best. And then the hardest thing after that is to let it go. Yeah. Which exactly. is the hardest thing to do and let it, let it be its own thing and let it, let it let it succeed, let it fail. I mean, yeah. it's hard because you get so attached to things. I can only imagine. Yeah. What do you see next for you guys? Like, um, I mean, we're you know we're still kind of you know writing out this album. You know, um, we're you know we're, we're pushing Morningstar right now as a single. Isn't that the fifth single? Off hmm? Lux? Isn't that the fourth or fifth? It depends on how you look at it. I mean, we we, we released a couple underground songs before the album even came out. I mean, we put out pleasure and pain there, you know, to kind of give everyone a taste of the of the heaviness and the intensity and the musicality and the duality. And then, you know, then we had we released a couple singles uh, just available for purchase, but we didn't really push them. And then we just let you know we we let everything come out real organically, song by song. And then when the album came out, you know, we we were pushing uh, Stardust for a while, and it was so successful that they just I wrote it to the wheels about came you, off. There's a street in South Florida, and I drove by and it was called Stardust. And I was yeah. like, ah, Gemini nice Syndrome. I have to like play the song because, I don't know, I'm super like that. I'm thrilled. No, that's <laughs> you know? good. I, it, 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 when I see stuff like that, it reminds me of a cool band. It makes me happy and smile. So it's, at the same time, like, kind of my geek out moment where I'm like, oh, I'm very good. Yeah. <laughs> We gotta drive by the. You gotta go to Naperville, Illinois, and drive by Stardust Motel, which is what that song's all about. Oh, I thought and that really was in LA. Out. No, no, it's in Illinois. Oh, it's it's in where LA. Aaron grew up in Illinois. Yeah. Oh, I remember you guys telling me this story at um, Rockville, but the camera the memory card went. But yeah, Technology. it's about the hotel that has infamous memories. Infamous <laughs> memories, yeah, Stardust Motel. Which wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> um, so, on stage, if you could have anything happen, you would want to summon aliens through Gemini Syndrome and the Collaborative Transfiguration. Can you please explain that to me? <laughs> Sometimes people ask questions, and you just have to give them the best answer possible. Okay. So, if, there's, if, they, if, if I could have anything happen, if I'm granted a wish, I would like our, the energy of the music and the people in the crowd to reach such a high vibration that we we, we elevate, like like Enoch. Like and the Celestine Prophecy? 
Uh, more old to infinity. It's kind of what it says. Yeah. The, the line, I mean. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah. true. I, I, I'm a geek, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, do you, you obviously believe in aliens, then? Oh, yeah. I mean... But not green, obviously. Huh? I mean, we don't even know. The thing is, is that we like to give things like that we like to say, oh, well, we have two arms, two legs, two eyeballs on the mouth, so Everybody else everyone else has to, you know what I mean? I mean, dinosaurs probably thought di aliens look like dinosaurs, you know what I mean? And Possibly. We don't even, yeah, I mean, it's they like might not even said. exist in our dimension or exist in physical like bodies. Said, it's all about perception. Yeah. You can perceive anything to be anything. Yeah, but you definitely want. there's a lot of life out there. And we can only perceive this much of our little electromagnetic spectrum, our little, our little visual audio. Yeah, it's awesome when people like you open up new, you know, parts of the brain to new ideas and like through your art and through your words and stuff. It's a, thanks for that, really, oh. truly, because you're making this easy for me. And I was really nervous, and I don't know why, because I said like, you spoke a concert for me, times, but you're very easy to talk to. So what thing? Cool. <laughs> Speaking of, do you have any advice for people out there that are wanting to be musicians and doing what you do? Like oh, just, uh, I mean, yeah, it's real simple, you know. Look at, the, look at the people that you consider to be successful. Like, if you wanted to be a lawyer and you were like, well, I want to be a lawyer, then find a lawyer that has what you want and be like, how'd you get there? And then he probably is going to tell you, oh, I did really good in school, I went to law school, and then I did this, and then now I'm here. You know, it's like... Talk to people, communicate. Say, hey, how'd you get where you're at? Well, they'll they'll let you know. You know, I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of work. You know, you got to stick with it. It's it's it, it's, just and it's just great to hear you say that because it's so true. If you, if you want to be successful, mirror it. <laughs> kind of. You know? Yeah. Um, is there anybody that you like special that you like to say hi to? Give a shout out to. Yeah, I mean, lots. I mean, I got I got an amazing family. You know, great friends. SFG. 12 in the house, North Hollywood Freemason Lodge, 542, hello, beautiful fiance. Awesome, Everyone. congratulations. Yes, well, thank you very, very much. Very, very cool. So when's the wedding? We don't know. Well, it's going to be We're gorgeous. swinging it right now. I'm sure it's going to be incredible. Oh, She's a very lucky lady, and you're a very lucky man, I'm sure. Thank you. I haven't met her, but I, I, I can say that with an honest smile. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, Brian, I know you probably have to get, get ready for your set and all that stuff. All right. And I just Thank you very much. My pleasure. Time. Thank you. And have a great show tonight. And um, I will be on and on later. So All right. I'll say peace and passing and stuff like that. Thank you. I'm Evie Starr with Brian Steele Medina from Gemini Syndrome. Peace, everybody. Complication journey through another maze. I found my way through recapitulation. Everything is.